Eh, allora adesso è eh, la volta di Lynn Webster, Lynn Webster Consultants, consulente ISSA, eh, quindi parliamo ancora di industria ovviamente dei servizi, di eh, facility management e credo che eh, Lynn sia anche eh, diciamo tra le persone più seguite, con maggiori competenze per quello che riguarda il settore soprattutto credo alberghiero di viaggio e turismo. Prego. Good afternoon and firstly thank you to Tony for inviting me here today. It's been a real uh, experience. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a little bit taller than Michelle. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I, I first want, before I go into my presentation, is to draw on a, a memory from the earlier experience today. And we've talked about the key worker um, relationship that cleaners have had through the pandemic. We talked about the fact that they were recognised uh, for their skills and their saving graces in many, many experiences. But as both Laura and Michelle have alluded to, we seem to have some very short memories when it comes to the work that they did. And I just want to take a moment today because I'm not sure if everybody in the room is aware, today is the global Thank Your Cleaner Day. And perhaps we should all reflect a little bit about saying thank you to those operatives that make our life a lot cleaner, a lot healthier, and a lot safer. So I think perhaps before we leave today, it's maybe finding the janitor, the housekeeper, and just saying thank you, because actually they've kept our world a lot cleaner for the last two days we've been here today. So I want to focus my pre presentation particularly on recruitment because the pandemic and this new normal that we're talking about and we've alluded to that we don't really understand at this stage has actually focused us all very much more on the labour market that we're experiencing. And for those of you who don't prescribe to European Cleaning Journal, in June of this year, there was a, a very insightful article, and it was very much titled, The Great Resignation. And I'm sure each of you in each of your businesses will focus a little bit on those that you have lost for various reasons over the last few years. But we're actually facing the fact that everybody has a different emphasis on their work-life balance and the fact that perhaps you've lost people that were on furlough or, or were ill during the pandemic who haven't returned and we've lost a great deal of skill from each part and each sector of our industry through that great resignation. So I feel that recruitment particularly therefore is going to be the greatest challenge for both colleagues and our clients. But there's also the fact that in cleaning particularly, we have become an almost aging population. We are certainly focused more on the fact that what we're going to do when people are leaving, have we got the succession planning in place for those people, those skills, that whole population of our workforce that we're probably going to be losing any time soon. They effectively would have been known as the Generation X. And we're now looking at the people that are occupying the facilities that Laura alluded to. Perhaps these people, the millennials that are probably the title given to another generation of those probably born between the early 80s and the mid 90s. They think very differently about their working conditions. As Laura suggested, visiting a premises that could actually be the be and end all of them joining your organization. So we have to look at the whole workplace in terms of the boundaries and exercising the different influences that that whole recruitment strategy is going to bring to bear 
when it comes to attracting the right people to our workforce. It's not necessarily just the, the job that they're taking. They need to have a level of purpose, a level of value. And perhaps that whole process of it isn't just a job anymore. It's something that those individuals are going to actually want to have a voice in the organisation. They want to actually feel that they're contributing to the wider experience of the workforce. So perhaps we need to then start looking in all sorts of positions in the company. We focus particularly in my industry on the, cleaner, the cleaners themselves, but this whole process does apply to all different positions in the organisation. And it's making the effort for the workforce to have that sense of purpose and hopefully giving them the return and experience and providing you with a higher retention and pride and endorsement for your team. But then we actually have the new Gen Zs, the people who are out there who were probably born around the millennium and onwards. They have a completely different outlook on work and what work means to them. We've talked a little bit and other people have raised the fact that it isn't work as a job, it's work as an activity. And this level of hybrid work that we have, this hybrid of whether we work from a home environment, whether we come into a workspace to carry out some of our functions, doesn't necessarily apply to the unfortunate cleaning operative who really isn't in a position to work from home. However, we do have within the expectations of this whole workforce, the fact that they raise a completely different argument because what they're doing is coming to the job interview and actually saying to you as the future potential employer, what are you going to do to make me come and work for you? Now that whole concept is something very, very different that perhaps we haven't experienced before, particularly in the integrated services that we deal with, we would actually expect somebody to come and want to work for us. And this whole new mindset is very, very different. So we have to perhaps make this more commonplace when we start to attract the right people to our environments and to our workforce. It almost feels that we're pampering to the employees. I certainly have personal experience of uh, my granddaughter and her partner who are both in their mid-twenties who are now actually demanding from their employers the fact that I'm not happy here. I'm feeling bored. I want to do something different. What are you going to do to stop me being bored, to make me feel like I want to come and work for you? And they have this whole, perhaps, arrogance of a generation that allows them to turn around and say, I want an increase in pay. I'm entitled to an increase in pay. Because I'm me and I need to work, but I only want to work for you if you want me to, if you actually offer me what I want. Or I relate to you an experience recently portrayed to me from a CEO of a janitorial company in the UK. She was involved with the interviewing for a new receptionist for her head office function in the north of England. She went through the shortlisting process. She gave a number of people an interview and she thought she'd really struck gold with this particular lady who's, who actually fitted every single criteria that she was looking for. 
And then she asked the lady if she had any questions or anything to ask. And she said, well, actually, I'd quite like to have my core hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I can work hybrid and flexible from home on a Monday and a Friday. And my colleague said, but this is a receptionist job. Not quite something you can do from home. So I think what we have to do is use that potential example, perhaps to look at the hybrid working that we may well be offering. Because are we ready to provide for this new normal with a new normal of employees that are coming our way? Or are we just going to bury our heads in the sand in despair that we can't recruit, that we continually can't rise to this challenge? It's not going to be an easy one. But the question is one that will not go away. Thank you. Grazie, grazie anche per questo uh, intervento di Lynn Webster. Uh, pensavo, mi faceva pensare no, quando si citavano anche gli addetti alle pulizie, che evidentemente è un lavoro che non è proponibile da remoto, diciamo, uh, e io per uh, il, il lavoro che faccio sono moltissimi anni, avendo fatto per lunghissimi anni, lo faccio tuttora, eh, il lavoro, svolgendo il mio lavoro molto presto la mattina che mi imbatto negli addetti alle pulizie no? eh, ci sono cresciuto professionalmente con molti addetti poi alcuni li ho visti per periodi molto lunghi altri con eh, i cambi di appalto probabilmente li ho visti no, per periodi più brevi e, e devo dire che uno pure per esempio nella composizione dei prodotti che usano, no? nel carrello che si usano uno ha visto i cambiamenti eh, li ha visti anche a livello proprio olfattivo si usavano, vi parlo di differenze tra vent'anni fa e oggi ovviamente, e, e, e quindi ho molto, eh, come dire, ho preso confidenza, ho solidarizzato molto con queste persone che all'alba devono ripulire eh, uffici, sedi varie, eh, e devo dire che mh, faccio una piccolissima riflessione perché poi anche questo fa parte ovviamente di un mondo molto più vasto e problematiche diciamo più generali, però quelli sono come dire, le, le, le figure che vediamo, no? i terminali umani che vediamo e devo dire che forse è stato eh, un caso, forse è stato destino, non lo so, ho sempre trovato persone poi eh, che svolgevano il loro lavoro con grande responsabilità e anche con un tratto umano che magari in altri mestieri uno non riconosce, cioè con anche un sorriso e un'educazione. Io sono testimone di questo e quindi volevo testimoniarlo a un settore che ha eh, dentro in pancia anche questo tipo di servizio. Allora grazie a Lynn Webster.